Grid and Grace has been called many things. Walton County's Folklife Play, Walton County's Best History Lesson, and the county's autobiography. Grit and Grace is all of these things and more. It is a mirror full of past and present, light and shadow, laughter and tears. It is every man and every town. It is the timeless picture of true grit and enduring grace. The Grit and Grace 2011 production was titled The Way It Was. And like all Grit and Grace productions, it is many stories in one. It is the story of the Florida Chautauqua, which brought culture, education, entertainment, and enlightenment to North Florida in the early 1900s. The way it was also illustrated the poor treatment of native Creek Indians in the 1940s, when they were forced to deny their true heritage and pretend to be white in order to secure education for their children and jobs for the adults. The way it was also traces the early days of school integration, with the story of the closing of the all-black Tivoli High School and the integration of both students and teachers into the all-white Walton High School. The way it was is a slice of life, a snapshot of days gone by. It is never about them. It is always about us. Say grits. One, two, three. Grits! These are true stories. These are stories that have been handed down for generations from people right here in Walden County. So Walden County's dear to me, so that makes these stories come to life on the stage and they're about real people. I just love the community, I love the spirit of Grant Grace, I love the history and that they're involving um, kids and groups of people from all different areas and ages that are coming together to celebrate our history as a community and I think that's one of the main things that draws me to it is the passion that they stir in people in history and in performance. I would tell them it's a, if they were from Walton County, I would tell them it was a history of the things that has gone on before. Uh, and if you want to know about Walton County history, and if you're interested in it, come to see the production because you will learn something. I don't care if you know all about it or think you know, you will still learn something new. Because we have an act of not passing it on like the older people did. Nowadays, the younger people don't know what happened back when, so it's good for them to get boned up on the history. In the public school, you get uh, a portion, but when you get out of school, it's just gone away. Nobody mentions it anymore. So things need to be said that will keep it in the forefront and not in the background. I love telling the history about where I'm from, what I'm proud of. And my grandmother, part of the story of this play is about my grandmother, who taught in Red Bay School for many years, 28 years at the Red Bay Community School. What was her name? Tommy Louise Merritt. Well, it's just like the theme. Let's talk about the old times. I mean, it's a uh, trip down memory lane. It's also a family experience. My children are involved in acting this year. And uh, um, I think it's just the excitement of doing a stage play. It's availability and accessibility is a great attraction. If you've never acted before, you might have the most terrific role ever that year. So um, that's one thing about Grit and Grace. It's just a terrific thing. If they're there, it's their heritage. It's their stories. It's their, their, their great grandparents, grandparents, parents. And uh, it's going to it's the flow of life. It's what brings the uh, past up through the present and into the future. And so if those things are not nurtured, then they're just sort of lost. I haven't been in every one of them because of health on some of them, but I've been in most of them, and I've thoroughly enjoyed them. Because it's our heritage. It really is. And, um, I wish that at some point somebody would take all of our scripts, assuming we still have the scripts, and put them together into a coherent book so that people in the future can read that because, to the best of my knowledge, everyone that has written for Grit and Grace has tried to be accurate in what they've written. 
Well, the idea is it's a community theater, and, and it's the idea of, of taking the local history and trying to put it into a visual context that people from all over could take a, a, a look at and see, maybe understand what it went on. No matter what part of the country you come from, there's always local history. Some things were very serious, very sad, but a lot of funny stuff happened. A lot of embarrassing things that after two years you can laugh about, but you don't want to talk about them immediately. So this area is, we got started in it. And, and, and this is the thing of taking local history and trying to uh, put some flesh and bone into it and, and show people and, and laugh at, at, at our, our mistakes in the past and hopefully we're building something towards the future. It's a collection of stories of the real life of people of their times, good and bad, the grit and the grace that it's taken to come to this point. It's uh, dance, it's music, and it's just real life. It's real life. No, you go to school tomorrow. You must go to school tomorrow. Maria, you will go far, but you need an education. You must go to school and use English and eat collards and must respect new father. For he is the reason you have these, these, comma, these bed. It's called bed. Bed. He is the reason you have this bed to sleep. See how wonderful it is. You must be grateful. Well, it's fun just being with the community, being with other talented people in the area. And boy, Walton County has a lot of talented folks. And also keeping the stories alive. That to me, every year you learn something. You learn, even though you live and you know, work here in Walton County, but every year there's something that comes forward to say, well, gosh, I didn't know that. And so, and it just brings you back for the next year. And it's the family, you know, it's just being with the cast and the crew. It's a good group of folks to be with. Yeah. Well, being gracious is two things. For one person that has lived their life here, you know, they will have known the history either through, you know, storytelling or reading the newspaper or coming to Great Grace in the, in the you know, past. For those who are new that have never seen this, um, even if you don't live in Walton County, we sell tickets, you know, really around the South. And it really shows the community and how it was formed, how history helped us become better today to live, you know, better in the, better in the future than we live today. And telling people who've never seen it, because I get a lot of people have asked me, you know, they think it's grits and grace, and it's like, you know, bacon and eggs. It's not, it's, you know, it took a lot of grit to get where we are today where we can actually have some grace for the future. And so people who've never seen this, telling them to try to get them to come to it, is that this is, of course, our history. This is what happened to us in Walton County. But it's also not only what happened to us, but what happened throughout the nation. And this year, this year's production really hits on that with the segregation, the issue um, that you know we all that everyone dealt with back in those days. It affected America. But we're just saying this to word for what happened here at Walton, here at Walton High School, actually, and with Tivoli, which you know was uh, was shut down, and that's when they pulled those schools together. So uh, just the history of, you know, of Walton County, uh, of course, Grace, here's some great acting and some great singing, and, you know, it's, uh, it speaks for itself. Once they get here, I don't think they'll be disappointed whatsoever. Grit and Grace is literally the history of Walton County. I've seen uh, scenes, adaptations of exchanges that went on between my grandmother and my aunt. Um, if you're from Walton County, you may see your family members portrayed on stage. If you aren't, you get to see where Walton County came from and where it is going. They are foolish that they have to dress in this fashion for their minds to work. Mine work just fine in overalls. Those men are cultured and well educated. Yeah, and their hands are soft and the muscles are weak. But their minds are sharp. And mine's not. You say I'm not clever? Who sells our produce in markets? Is it cleverness that puts food on our table? George, remember yourself. I'm not myself, it's you for getting her place. I've had enough of this ridiculous spectacle. Let's go home. How's it going there, assistant director? Oh, <laughs> it's going great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good answer. Yeah, how's it really going? It's, it actually is. It's yeah. going really good. Yeah. I mean, they've learned the lines really quick. Uh, I mean, I'm impressed.
So, I mean, they give them one day and the next day they know them. They're like sponges. Getting their blocking down and um, just remembering their cues. That, that's the main thing, you know. Um, but it, it's coming along really good. As you see, we're the that side, that's going to be the train station. Then after that, then we're going to close that off. That, so that's going to be used for the train station in the first half. The way it was was directed by Jeannie Danielle Jackson, a former Walton County resident who went on to become a professional playwright, filmmaker, and director. I was home in January visiting my parents and I saw an ad in the newspaper where they were collecting stories and then I started asking around about what it was and how they hired their playwrights and no one knew. So I just sent a um, letter of inquiry um, and letter of expression to them saying, hey, I'm here, don't know what your organization's really about, but I'm a playwright, I'm from here, I'd like to get involved. And then they contacted me and it went from there. When I was in high school, I was always, I was made fun of quite a bit. And I told my mom, um, I would tell my mom about it, and she's like, grow up. When I went to school, there was National Guardsmen, tear gas, people were cutting each other in the hallways. And then I was like, really? And so it always had that story in the back of my head. And um, when I spoke to people about grit and grace out in the community, they said it was just getting tired. And it was the same thing every year. And I said, well, I definitely don't write the style that they usually write in. So if they're willing to do something new, I'm willing to step in. And that's what I wanted to do it on, because I feel like we do have so much race and ethnicities here, as opposed to other counties. And when you're writing for something specific, you have to go for what is specific about that county or that area. And for us, we had the Muskogees. Um, my mom went to school with a little Mexican-American girl in Glendale, and she thought it was the coolest thing in the world. So that's where that comes from. And then also the desegregation. And it went really well here. It just still the issues that we did wait until the government said, no, really, you have to do this. No more choices. This year, done. As far as acting, everyone was really excited and really ready to work and respectful in that way. So it was, it was for me, it was definitely new. Um, but I, I found that I really, it was very rewarding and enjoy. Grit and Grace is also a showcase for talented local children. There's a couple kids now, I even told them, I was like, you know, you can go and work and make money and this could be your career as a kid even because you're there. It's just you're in Defuniac Springs and not not much going on in that way here. So, um, but yeah, there's definitely, and talent's just maybe 1% of it. And that's what I try to teach the kids. It's all about your discipline and how you respect people and how you treat people and how easy you are to work with. Because I'd much rather, I'd much rather cast someone who's easy to work with been super talented and really difficult. And so I think for them that was new. I, I didn't let them rest on their talent. I kept pushing them.